Well, the International Monetary Fund to date has promised almost $120 billion to the embattled economies of Thailand, Indonesia, and South Korea. Immediately after arrival in the crisis-stricken countries, the IMF teams set up offices inside the central banks, from where they dictated what amounted to terms of surrender. The IMF demanded a string of policies, including curbs on central bank and bank credit creation, major legal changes, and sharp rises in interest rates. As interest rates rose, high-risk borrowers began to default on their loans. Burdened with large amounts of bad debts, the banking systems of Thailand, Korea and Indonesia were virtually bankrupt. Even otherwise healthy firms started to suffer from the widening credit crunch. Corporate bankruptcies soared. Unemployment rose to the highest level since the 1930s. The role of the fund in coming to the rescue of ailing nations has been fiercely debated. Some have even accused the IMF of actually making Asia's economic crisis worse. Even if they have to subvert our economy, they will do so just to prove that they are right. The IMF has not been very helpful. The IMF knew well what the consequences of its policies would be. In the Korean case, they even had detailed but undisclosed studies prepared that had calculated just how many Korean companies would go bankrupt if interest rates were to rise by five percentage points. The IMF's first agreement with Korea demanded a rise of exactly five percentage points in interest rates. The IMF policies uh, are clearly not aimed at creating economic recoveries in the Asian countries. Uh, they pursue quite a different agenda, and that is to change the economic, social, and political systems in those countries. In fact, the IMF deals prevent um, the countries uh, concerned, like Korea, Thailand, um, to reflate. Interesting, you're saying it's making uh, the crisis worse, and you're suggesting that the IMF has a hidden agenda. Well, I mean, it's not very hidden, this agenda, because the IMF quite clearly demands uh, um, that the Asian countries concerned have to change the laws, uh, so that uh, foreign interests can buy anything from banks to land. Um, and in fact, uh, the banking systems um, can only be recapitalized, according to the IMF deals, uh, by using foreign money, which is not necessary at all, because as long as these countries have central banks, um, they could just print money and recapitalize the banking systems. You don't need foreign money for that. Um, so the agenda is clearly to crack open Asia um, for foreign interests. The IMF demanded that troubled banks would not be bailed out, but instead closed down and sold off cheaply as distressed assets, often to large US investment banks. One positive coming out of Thailand is that they'll be auctioning off uh, some major assets from uh, 56 uh, finance companies. In your view, should um, some of the owners from the 56 finance companies be allowed to buy back their assets? In most cases, the IMF dictated letters of intent explicitly stated that the banks had to be sold to foreign investors. And let me emphasize in that respect that these reform programs are the key, the absolute key, to restoring financial stability. For the first time ever, South Korea closed five banks in a major step toward meeting its IMF mandate. The number of commercial banks has, uh, has declined, has been reduced as a result of uh, uh, closure, mergers and uh, acquisitions and the foreign strategic investors are now in, uh, which, uh, which is a remarkable change. 